All right, let's talk about those Hokies that are ranked 14th in the initial BCS standings. Is it too high? Is it too low? And what do they have to worry about this weekend when they take on Duke? I think that it's probably a little high, but for the most part, I think it's about right. I think it is nice to see the Hokies getting some recognition. They haven't necessarily done it against the best opponents, but then again, neither have a lot of the teams that we're looking at in the top 15. So it's easy to just sort of write the ACC off for a lot of the reasons that you know we talked about earlier, but I really think that you know they deserve to get a little bit of respect. Those are some quality wins that they put up, whether it's at Georgia Tech or you know UNC at home. Night. On a yeah, on a Thursday night. I think that, you know, they deserve this credit. I do think that Duke is a little worrying, and I think a lot of people are not talking about it. You know, this is a Duke team that can put up points in bunches. They sort of showed it last year when they came into Lane Stadium and hung 20 points on the Hokies in the first quarter. Okay. So, I, you know, I would be a little worried. They just put up 35 points against Pitt, just came back from a huge deficit against UVA, and sort of ran them out of the building in the second half. So I'd be a little worried. I think that maybe, you know, a lot of people are coming off the bye week. You know, maybe you might take it a little seriously. But I think they have the advantage of having that week to prepare. That is probably not going to be a huge deal, but I'm not mildly worried. It should be at least a little interesting. I, I think you have to be just a little bit because it's been interesting against Duke lately. Mm -hmm. it, it has not. I think the last time that it was a really – I mean, I know last year ended up being a blowout, but the last time we had a true, you know, Duke blowout. It seems like it was all the way back our freshman year. Yes. And so to me, it, it has gotten a little bit interesting. They are a very good offensive team. They run a nice offense. Cutcliffe obviously has done a good job uh, with their quarterbacks. Boone is a good quarterback. We saw him a little bit last year. So for me, it, it is a little bit worrying just because, like you said, it, it doesn't feel like anyone else's. But the only people that matter, obviously, or if the, the team is focused on it. It doesn't matter if the folks in the stand think that it's <laughs> going to be a, a trouncer. As long as you know they have spent their two weeks getting ready for this, mm -hmm. then they should be okay. I think the part of the reason why they are up so high, other than the computer rankings, is people love defense. Mm -hmm. and in a, in a world now where defense is scarce, <laughs> it's a, an endangered species essentially in college football, when people see that your team is second and that you're somehow winning games, you're not pulling a Michigan State and having one of the best defenses, but just literally cannot do anything else. Um, I think that people appreciate that, and they see that Virginia Tech has a great defense, and because of that, they think that they can handle some of these teams up at the top, and that's a reason why I think you get a little bit more respect. It's not when you are a team like Miami, not that they haven't gotten the respect, obviously, mm -hmm. and they're, they're winning, but... What's the thing that you point out about Miami? Yeah. Whereas Virginia Tech has an identity right now. True. They're a fantastic defensive team, and everyone in the comp or everyone in the entirety of college football knows that because of what they did against Alabama yeah. and against you know all their other games this year. So I think that that helps having something that you can hang your hat on, which the Hokies definitely have. Yeah, I completely agree with that. What I think is worth watching when you talk about that defense mm -hmm. is coming in against Duke. You're facing the nation or the conference's leader in receptions, and Jameson Crowder, and you're having to do that while simultaneously integrating Anton Exum, who should finally be back this week, at least he said so last night at practice, we'll and then working in Brandon Faison, whose playing time might be limited coming into all this because he suffered a concussion on Sunday. Say, who knows he was in the green no-contact jersey on Tuesday, so it's clear that coaches are taking things sort of slowly, and he at practice very much sounded like he wanted to sort of take things easy. He wasn't in a hurry to get back. He knows that he's got Exum coming back. He knows that he's got the Fullers behind him, so I think that that's an interesting thing to sort of keep an eye on. I, I think the players are very much still taking it seriously. Every one of them, to a man, mentions the fact that they just couldn't believe that they went down by 20 so quickly last year. I don't think any of them have forgotten that, and I know the coaches certainly haven't. So I think that there's maybe a little bit of a reason to worry, but in terms of holding on to the 14th spot, I think they will ultimately be okay. Offense. Yes, please, Logan Thomas. It has us. to, and Thomas has been good lately, but yep. it's somehow the running game's got to get going. Can we hit 20 points? Let's find out. We'll see.